please tell us um, how the biosand filter invention came to be. Uh, I was a professor at the University of Calgary and I was an instructor of environmental engineering and I uh, wanted to get involved with um, international development as I thought about it in the 1980s, late 1980s. And um, so I volunteered my time and whatever resources to what was at then called the Division of International Development at the University of Calgary to learn how international development was done at that time, what the views were. And uh, I think I was the only engineer that was ever involved, usually it was social scientists and things like that. Anyway, and there's a certain amount of conflict there between the engineers and the social scientists back then. I don't know if it still is the case. But anyway, it was great. I learned I've got a thick enough skin and, uh, and uh, was welcomed. And so the next thing I know, I'm uh, being asked to travel to uh, KwaZulu-Natal in South Africa to help with their water part of their projects that they had. And this was in 1988, uh, which is still apartheid South Africa. So I ended up in uh, KwaZulu-Natal and was touring all of these problem sites that they had. And it was uh, pretty amazing that they uh, had a lot of problems with water, safe water uh, availability. So, and the solutions that were offered were not possible in many cases. And uh, so that's rather a bad thing to see. It's disheartening. And so anyway, I came back. I could solve some problems, but I, could, I came back to Calgary and in the following year, I had an opportunity to visit the southern Philippines, the island of Mindanao uh, near Davao. And the uh, university had another project projects down there with all kinds of water problems. And uh, so they asked me to go down there and see what I could do, you know, uh, understand what the problems were and perhaps come up with solutions. I could, uh, I mean, I'd visited about three or four problem sites per day for a period of a month. And in many cases, uh, the solutions were not possible using the tool kit that they were uh, attempting to use and had available. And then there are other issues like, you know, you end up with corruption, you end up with all kinds of strange human factors, <laughs> okay? And so I came back and I thought, gee, Dave, you know, you're a professor of environmental engineering here. You should be able to come up with an idea or something for homeowners, okay, for people in the home. Like I realized that you, I, I didn't believe the community scale projects were particularly successful because the community governance system broke down all the time. And that was really the problem. So that was a kind of a human factor. Anyway, so this was pre-internet days, as you might imagine. And the only uh, technology that came to mind was slow sound filtration. And, uh, and I had this burning desire to do something, too, I might add, and uh, for whatever reason. And so I uh, researched why slow sound filters failed, and, uh, which they did in many environments, okay? I mean, they didn't have to be little guys. They could be quite big ones. And I came up with an idea of how to make these things uh, for a household scale, and that overcame all of the problems associated with, uh, say, like how people would want to use them. Uh, you know, you, you, if you understand people or like people, you want it to be uh, at a human scale. I'm like, I, first of all, household by household. Households will take care of themselves. Uh, secondly, it had to fit in with the household culture, a user culture. You use it when you want to. Okay, when you need water, you produce water. Um, 
And so those are, and it had to be a, a right size, like a, a human scale. You know, we discovered that, well, gee, you know, we could make it a human scale. So the concrete filter had to be a human scale filter, uh, not something that is six feet tall and you have to climb a ladder uh, to get to. And uh, so I developed a theory for why this thing would work and had the wonderful opportunity to uh, recruit a fourth year engineering student, uh, Dave Lee. And uh, we got volunteer lab testing from the provincial government laboratories. And uh, we produced our first garbage can slow sand filter. And it worked, okay, it checked out. And this was, this is pre-patent, okay, you have to, and so I was quite excited because suddenly I realized that possibly we can make a contribution to these communities. And, and that's a big deal uh, to me. And I grew up on a small farm in central Saskatchewan and, and the kind of circumstances that these people were living in were not totally alien to me. I mean, the outhouses and the barnyard and all the other things. I mean, the rusticness, if you will. You know, in Canada, we might call it camping out but in, in many respects and, and really enjoy ourselves. But they, but this filter had the potential, uh, even at that stage, to be uh, something really important to these communities. So, but we didn't know whether people would like it. <laughs> you know, it like, uh, and then I shared the experiences with the uh, gentleman who was the head of the Division of International Development, Mel Kerr. And he got all excited because the university's projects were in uh, collaboration with the Pan American Health Organization out of uh, Montevideo, Uruguay. And uh, so at one of the gatherings in at the Banff Convention Center or whatever it's called, the uh, BAMP School of Fine Arts, where they had a week-long session. Uh, they agreed that they would introduce this into Nicaragua, and then I got really excited because they still didn't know. So to answer your question, it's a long answer, but then I finally saw the opportunity that maybe this thing could do some good into these communities, and maybe I'd have an impact on the health of people. So. Long answer. <laughs> no, that's great.